Kia and Mama Igwe mess we're about to get into right now. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Black on Black Cinema. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. And Terrence. Up. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, this is episode 171, Coffee. Uh, this is the 1973 black exploitation film starring Pam Greer and like other people. But the other person who I even care about is the fact that Sig Haig is in this movie, um, which is just from RoboCop. He's in a lot of movies. Uh, he's also in those uh, disturbing um, Rob Zombie movies, uh, Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses and all that other craziness. And he just died actually recently, which is uh, – Yeah, he looked old in this movie. <laughs> this was 73. So. Yeah, he's been old. He's He has uh, – he had Morgan Freeman disease. He's been old since he was born. <laughs> he just had an old man face. Um, so this, uh, this movie is uh, – the the first movie that Jack Hill uh, directed with Pam Greer, uh, obviously he directed uh, Foxy Brown, which was his next film after this. Um, Terrence, this is a movie that you've seen numerous times. Uh, <laughs> you were excited to do this movie. Uh, excited? <laughs> okay. I'm throwing blame. I'm throwing. You know what, Terrence? Your blame? your thoughts. Blame. Um, Partial blame. I've, I've, I mean, I've seen it. This is the one that I remember the most from her movie. Oh, okay. Honestly, as as I was watching it, because I'm like, because when we did um, Foxy Brown, Foxy Brown, there were scenes that I'm like, I could have sworn that happened in this movie, but no, it's this one. Um, yeah, it's not good. Like, okay, none of the movies are really good. Okay, <laughs> okay, we can just get that out of the way. This movie's right. not good. It, it, none of them are good, but Pam Grier's in it. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's it that's all i got that's <laughs> like <laughs> like look there was some scenes that i was laughing very hysterically at um like i got nothing like pam is in it it's a black movie and there's a lot of titties yeah there's a lot a whole lot like for no reason sometimes yeah <laughs> Okay, thank you. The majority of the time, <laughs> it's like that was completely unnecessary. It's just gratuitous. Sure, <laughs> uh, Micah, your thoughts on this? Um, yeah, it's a movie. Um, I think Foxy Brown is better. Um, I think Foxy Brown tells a better story. Um, has a story. Yeah, it has a damn story. story. (laughs) Yeah, it pretty much is. But uh, I remember there was much more to laugh at in Foxy Brown, uh, you know, in a fun way than this. Uh, uh, Three dudes on a motorcycle and they take their helmets off and they're women now. (laughs) Right. That scene (laughs) with red, white and blue. Yes. Right. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. to me. Wait, was that Foxy Brown? Was it Foxy Brown? Oh, was that? No, that's three the hard way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's three the hard way. Right. It's all running together. All these movies, all these movies are the same fucking thing. (laughs) Damn. All right. Well, this, well, yeah. All right. I take it back then. This is, (laughs) this is just as good as Foxy Brown. Mm, Agree to disagree. Titties in it. So, yeah, titties are nice. And, um, What's what's what sucks is that this is a really good premise, right? This is, yeah, it is. this is black woman Punisher, right? Like this is the yeah. black woman's version of the Punisher, and um and it started out pretty good, and then it just got it, it turned into a black exploitation movie, <laughs> and it just it just kind of it just kind of is it just kind of walks along the beach at moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> to do whatever. I so. I found this movie to be like I was amazed that this came before Foxy Brown, right? Like but then I guess when I think about it it's like Jack Hill clearly figured out what he had in Pam Greer like oh, okay, like she's a star. Like you know, she's this beautiful woman, like she'll do like great action movies and stuff like that. Um but in this movie he was just like, oh, I have this beautiful woman. Let me figure out any way to get her top off. Like, like over and over and over again. And I'm like, this is fine, but this shit seems a little insane. Like, 
relax, yo, relax. Like we get it. Um, so, and it was also that for like every woman in a the, in the tri-state area, he was like, "You get your top off. You get your top off for no reason." Um, yeah. It's super wild, but yeah. But then you see Foxy Brown, and it's like, okay, this is a coherent, like a coherent story with this action heroine that far surpassed this one. I thought. Um, it's got some moments that are super wild. Uh, like the whole like drug drugging people thing is just is a problem. <laughs> it's a real problem. Um, there, yeah. There's a lot of things in this movie that are just super wild. I thought it was I thought it was okay to not great. Like it it feels like very down down the middle. Like a like a fifty fifty movie for me. Like I could not see this again, but I'd watch Foxy Brown a number of times. Like I just enjoy Foxy Brown much more. Yeah, I, I Three the Hallway really spoiled me with uh how I want my black exploitation. Like like <laughs> That I movie is be, a fucking ten out of ten, yeah. <laughs> I don't want it to be taken seriously at all. Very and, like very little of it. Like, tell me the plot, how is the white man responsible, and then just go crazy. Like yeah, that's what I want. What is your excuse to kill all the white people? Like that's what I that's what I want out of my black exploitation. Yeah, you know, too, sir. Um, all right. Uh, if there's nothing else, I guess we can begin. <laughs> um, guess how many days this film took to shoot? Four, seven. <laughs> I mean, you're really lowballing it. Eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tyler Perry made his last. Masterpiece in six, so I didn't see any boom mics in this movie. No, this is a better movie. This is a better movie. Possible, but you know, hey, hey, extras didn't look at the camera that I saw (laughs) in eating air food. (laughs) (laughs) You know, coffee is a a better made movie than uh, (laughs) than than the latest Tyler Perry. God damn, and it cost (laughs) half a million dollars to make a half a million dollars. This chump change in the movie industry. Um, so the movie opens and we see a guy named Grover, um, a very unfortunate name, uh, <laughs> come into a club and meet up with this drug pusher named Sugar Man. Okay. Uh, uh, speaking of Tyler Perry, this is one of the worst wigs I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, this wig. It looks. It looks like. It looks the like helmet. the helmet from like Spaceballs. Like it looks ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it was that man looked like somebody's sitcom dad <laughs> like Carl Winslow <laughs> <laughs> he does with a wig oh Bill Johnson's father <laughs> <laughs> it might be so Sugar Man wants Grover to get gone right but Grover comes in with a peace offering a piece of tail uh, so a girl so strung out that she is willing to do anything for a drug fix. That's the that's the woman that he brings to her. So, Sugar Man meets up with the yo. Girl. That's wildly unacceptable, but okay. This is some Sugar Bill Cosby ass behavior. I mean, he's like, how drugged is she? I mean, I mean, look, he go he goes to a car, t- comes to his car to grow his car, and this woman's name is Coffee, right? He comes to her car and he sees them titties and is like. Like you said, mm, I'll strung out. <laughs> right. <laughs> she seems she seems cognizant. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you down? You down for whatever? <laughs> you, uh, uh, I don't have to get back to Harriet and, and for another three hours. So before you Harriet. continue, I decided to look at uh, Morris Buchanan as the guy to play Sugar Man. I decided to look at his uh, filmography, <laughs> and he played in a movie called Panther of the panther girl of the congo and apparently he played a gorilla <laughs> yo come on yo come on yeah that's unacceptable <laughs> yo, I'm not making that up. yo come on yo yo you can't make that <laughs> yeah that's unacceptable yo that's unacceptable oh, Jesus wow wow yo they will like they literally will give us no roles, yo. Like, God, they will yeah. give us no fucking... It's not even a fucking human role, yo. Yo, it's his second credit on IMDb, yo. <laughs> this nigga was in a real-ass movie before that. Did you see Did you see the suit? 
Did nah, yo, I'm not looking that up. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> yo, I, I can't. Yo. It's on IMDb. It's the second picture. He has three photos, and the second photo is him in a gorilla suit. No, <clears throat> I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. I refuse. Yo, to look come that. on, yo. That's come funny. On. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and look at that white woman like huh <laughs> oh that's unfortunate damn um all right so they all drive <laughs> they they all in grover's car and they drive in grover's place to get on fuck right and during this you see all the, the title sequences apparently this is a real time drive to grover's house yeah <laughs> it's taking a little <laughs> long um, and we hear some of this music. By the way, music not feeling it in this movie. Uh, yeah, not no, mm-hmm. I did not like it. It, it felt like, two themes, and they both weren't very good. Yeah, her name is Coffee, and she's gonna cream you. Mm, no, no, no. Wait, no. Um, some, some white guy thought that up and was really proud of it. It was like fucking nailed it. Like no, uh, this is that's bad. Um. Yeah, it feels like a, a really lame version of the the I would argue the superior and one of the best black exploitation s- songs of all time, the Boss Nigger um, uh, song. It's the shit like that. That one is catchy. Boss Nigger has got the it's got the best intro of uh, of any of them, of any of them. Period. Yeah, it's not the best yeah. movie. I like the movie, but it, it's it, it's not the uh, it's not the best movie. But it does it definitely has the best theme. We, uh, I will say that uh, there is one song that I just found hilarious, which is probably the best song in this movie, but we'll get to it. Okay. It's another theme, if you will. <laughs> oh, boy. If you remember it. I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's remember. Like, fucking rolling. I'm like, really? Okay. Uh, so they go, uh, they go to Grover's place, and there we see um, the, uh, the first appearance of Best Supporting Actress uh, Pam Greer's boob um, as they they get high and as as the two guys get high and and you know they're trying to they're trying to they're trying to bang coffee because because coffee looks like Pam Greer um, all yeah. of a sudden uh, coffee tells uh, sugar man to set the mood right and while he's got his back turned she pulls a sawed off shotgun out of his out of her hair <laughs> And uh, he turns. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a silly that's a silly thing, but yes, she does. Uh, that was uh, Pam Greer's idea, by the way. Pam Greer was like, "Yo, wouldn't it be cool if I pull a sawed-off shotgun out of my hair?" You know, first of all, I mean, your hair is beautiful, but you ain't got that much hair to pull out a gun. No, that's not really shotgun. how that works. Um, and two, yeah, I'm, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of. I'm gonna need you to not like. Use your hair as a weapon like that, but that I mean that's a that's a continuing theme it's a through running theme in this movie. Well, <laughs> yeah. in, in Foxy Brown too, Foxy Brown as well. Yeah, she put a gun in her hair in that one. That's the, that's like the big finale of that movie. Yeah, was it a uh, was it a two foot gun? No, it wasn't. But uh, <laughs> it was a handgun. Yeah, it was just a twenty two a, a normal sized handgun. Yes. Um. So yeah, she blows this nigga's head off. Yeah. I was oh not expecting God. that. <laughs> I completely forgot that. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit, is this gonna be one of them super violent like like black exploitation movies? Cause god damn, she, she like you could that was like a fatality, yo. Know? Like yeah. I, like a it was it was it was pretty it was pretty great. Uh then she turns her attention to Grover. And Grover is just high. Grover is like Grover is tripping, right? He's like, "Yo, what the fuck? Like, why are you doing this?" All right? Because he's high, and he don't he don't know what he's seeing, right? But he's like, "Yo, why'd you do this?" Right? And and we find out that Coffee's last name is Coffin. People call her Coffee for short, even though it's not for short because it's the same <laughs> amount of syllables. But I like my name. <laughs> Terrence and Terry, two syllables. <laughs> Not anyway. Continue. Pisses me off. Uh, I mean, we could, we could, we could shorten it if that's if that's what the problem is. Will you go by a shortened name? No. Okay. Just, I just thought, thought I would. I, 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 I just thought I would ask. I mean, what would you shorten it to? There's nothing. Rents. 
I'm not going to no. say because that sounds stupid. <laughs> and I don't need to be on. Yeah, like Ranks Priebus. <laughs> He's got a dumb fucking name. <laughs> he does. He does. <laughs> so, That's a fact. So, Coffee has a little sister named Lulabelle, or L- Lubelle, not Lulabelle, <laughs> Lubelle, which black people, what are you doing? <laughs> And um, who was on Smack at 11. And Yo, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a wild scenario. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, I, I get it. I get what you're trying to do. They're really trying to drive that point home. Yeah, goodness gracious. I'm going to shake the shit out of you, little Jimmy. Um, <laughs> Luda Bell was on Smack at 11, and Grover uh, got her on it. So, yeah, what kind of nigga are you? <laughs> hey, how old are you? 11. Try this, try these drugs, try this hair on. Um, so, right. so coffee forces Grover, uh, to take, to take a, a shot of heroin so big that it'll kill him, uh, to make it look like, uh, he OD, to make it look like he shot Sugar Man and to make it look like he shot Sugar Man. And and then he just OD. Right. So next day, uh, or next night, after the killings, basically, Coffee returns to her day job or night job as a, 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 a nurse or a doctor or something. Some, I think she, she's a she nurse. Works, she works in the operating room. She works in an operating room with like 85 people in it. <laughs> yeah, it's a little busy in there. <laughs> <laughs> and we never find out Coffee's first name, right? No, I don't think so. Coffee. No. Um, so we, we find out that she uh, is a nurse and uh, a local cop named Carter Brown starts a conversation with Coffee at the hospital now. Okay, this seems a little weird, right? Like, am I crazy? Like, it's him. Back and, real quick. Like, it's him and like a white cop they roll into the hospital. And then this dude is just like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever that nigga talking about. Let me try to holler at you. (laughs) It's just a super wild scene. He was just like, yeah, fuck cop duties. Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hook up with Foxy bro. So So or coffee. Sounds like every black cop I've met. (laughs) Okay, that's fair. (laughs) Like there's a crime going on. Yeah, I I hear that. But anyway, (laughs) niggas get shot every day, B. Anyway, so what (laughs) shouldn't. So they're at the uh, hospital because, you know, they're doing some investigation. They want to, you know, enter the two murders and uh, or the, the murder suicide. And uh, Carter Carter is just like, Look, let me highlight you for a minute. Many, I'm sorry. How many days passed after this, after she blew his head off and she made him take, <laughs> take I feel uh, it's the same day. I assumed, I assumed it because was hours. Toxic, toxicology yeah. reports are not that fast. And this is 1973, but that's fine. <laughs> I mean, you don't know that. Wait a bit. <laughs> but look, like uh-huh. the like the black cop that he is, Carter's is like, uh, uh, what happened? Oh, oh, yo, yo. Well, we should probably go to the hospital right now. <laughs> we should probably leave the scene of this crime and go to the hospital right now. We got to beat the bodies there. <laughs> you know, we got to let the hospital know that the bodies are coming. <laughs> oh, but Carter is that white cop's new partner. Yeah, yeah, again, like that's what I'm saying. Like this scene is super wild because he's like, "Hey, this is uh, this is my partner," and and the new cop is like, "Yeah, no, fuck all that." Anyway, how you doing? Like it's just like yo, you got a whole ass job going on. He just don't give a fuck. It's just, it's super wild. So Carter is a uh, I got this from Wikipedia. Carter is a straight shooting officer who's not willing to bend the law for the mob or the yo. The folks. nigga was in the movie for five minutes. <laughs> right. He doesn't. Know yeah. He doesn't need a background at all. He's just a he's just a cop. Uh so he talks to the coffee and he brings up the killings that coffee committed, but he thinks it's the local mob because I mean yeah. cops ain't smart in this film. No, I mean or at all. But um yeah, it's it, I mean it's a classic case. Oh, so, you know, it, it's like um uh the spook who sat by the door. Oh, it has to be the Russians. It couldn't possibly be a black man, you know, coordinating all this. It's the same sort of idea. Yeah, you're right. He does. He walks in there. He's like, ah, oh, fuck all that. And then he goes talk to her about the situation. Like she has information. <laughs> yeah. He like, he's like, it's weird, isn't it? It's like, nah, I believe it's the, it's the, it's the mob. Like, fuck you telling me for it. Nigga, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like, the... I'm a nurse. nigga. <laughs> and then he asks her out. What are you doing tomorrow? 
Yeah, yeah. He uh, he shoots a shot, and um, and Coffee says something to the effect of, "You ain't gonna wanna, you ain't gonna wanna go where I wanna go." And this nigga's thinking with his dick. He's like, "Oh boy, yeah, sure, I'll go wherever." Well, <laughs> no, <Nah, laughs> I, I love going on seven mile hikes. Whatever, like I love it. <laughs> I, I love running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We can run right down on Beach Drive. I, 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 ooh, I can't wait. So you can get yourself in trouble. Yeah, I got it now. <laughs> I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go for a run? Never again. Nope. nope. <laughs> you you divorcing me? <laughs> you got a problem? <laughs> nah, we good then. <laughs> it's fucked up. So Coffee's like, you ain't going to want to go where I want to go. And he was like, try me. You know, thinking if I if I do whatever she says, she'll give me something. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day, Coffee takes Carter to a juvenile rehab center to visit her uh, 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 up sister. There's nothing that gets a guy's dick harder than <laughs> going to a child drug rehabilitation center. Like, oh, I can't wait for this. Like, fuck. I thought we were just um, going to go to some boring-ass thing chicks like to do, like craft show or something. Come on. <laughs> I didn't want to go to this. Um, Yeah, these two ain't sisters, yo. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It's not even close. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not even close. Like, she shows... How old was her sister at this point? 14? 12? Oh, yeah, probably. And I'm like, your I'm sister's only half. like... Unless she had, like, permanent brain damage, like, she'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> like she's still pretty young. Um, uh, not were, dead. Were were they shooting heroin into her eyeballs? Because like, yo, she's catatonic. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, what is, I, I was confused. I'm like, she oh, can shit. talk. Maybe apparently, I don't know. Apparently, she can eat candy because that's what she brought her. Huh? I'm sure you don't bring, uh, you know. Smarties to a to a kid trying to kick heroin. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! But whatever. Um. Uh, oh, we're mad. Okay, so uh, uh, we see we we get a look on Carter's face. Like, god damn this this might not be worth it. Um, and then <laughs> look around. <laughs> He's like, yo, this is like, yo, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I'm a fucking cop. I see this shit every day. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so they start driving back, and during the drive back home, Coffee asks Carter uh, if she, if the law knows what's going on, and he knows who the drug dealers are, why can't he just arrest them? And Carter gives, you know, the standard, you know, it's not that simple. And Coffee tells him. But uh, it is, though. <laughs> Coffee tells him that um, it's, it's not that the law can't do anything. It's that they won't do anything because they, they're getting a piece of it. And um, it's amazing how that's such a wild idea even today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's funny how, like, nothing changes. Yeah. Like, nothing. Like, you say the same shit over and over for literally decades. Nigga, I used to live next to drug dealers. How do I know their operation and the cops don't know? <laughs> Go stand on the corner, nigga. They just, he hands him the money. He drives up the street. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Post your car across the street. It's not hard. We can't figure it out. All right. Well, you, you're the worst detectives. <laughs> Um, where am I at? So, um, gyrating white woman. Carter, Carter, drops, <laughs> short, Carter drops coffee off, and they see that coffee's boyfriend, city councilman Howard Brunswick, has sent a car for her. Car takes uh, coffee to meet with him and Ruben Ramos at uh, at a club. The so Ruben Ramos is a deputy commissioner for the police, and they go to meet uh, at club dancing white woman. Yo, this is the uh, yo, this is not good. Not, I don't know. Yo, I don't know. In the seventies, in the seventies, they just didn't give a fuck. Like every club just had naked women in it. Like this is the first of many gratuitous titty shots that just don't make sense. And her ass is as floor, flat as an ironing board. It's, it's a goddamn shame. Um, yeah, this is this is before like 
white women knew what a squat was. Like she just ain't got nothing going on. Yeah. Like, yeah, which is why she's wearing that thong to find out where actually the proportions <laughs> are and shit. Yeah, dude, it's just <laughs> it's like might as well be looking at a flat piece of paper. Yeah, you know, like what the fuck? I'm surprised the underwear were even able to stay on. Just they didn't just slide off. <laughs> it's I mean, it's, it's 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 super tight. It's super tight. It have to be. It has to be because mm, right, this man. entire scene, she's dancing. In a circle of candles that, when panned out, looks like she's dancing in a, like a ring of fire. But is she's just a like in a of candles, or is it a fireplace? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a circle of candles in a fireplace in front of a fireplace. Yeah, it's oh, it's oh, weird. It's like God. this weird grotto that they're in. Like it's fucking bizarre. It's a strange restaurant. Is this a restaurant? This is an Applebee's. It's a strip club, <laughs> <laughs> strip club slash restaurant. I'm not eating at a strip club. No. Oh. No. Nah, yo. yo, if you eat at the buffet at a strip club, you are a nasty nigga, yo. You are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> and there's one of you listening right now, like, yo, but they got the good wings. Nah, yo, they don't. Don't do right. that. Right. Right. Do better, Demetrius. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fucking good. I'm just having fun. There's a there's a weird guy at the club watching everyone, and this dude, I mean, this dude is trying to look inconspicuous, and I don't know it's, how I don't think anyone, it's possible. I don't know how anyone could could <laughs> could not see him as inconspicuous. Why he's wearing the thickest fucking uh, glasses, and one of the glasses is darkened because he's he's missing an eye instead of wearing a fucking eye patch the guy has on a pair of glasses with one lens darker <laughs> oh, that's how they did it back in the day <laughs> what the fuck this is the worst nick fury cosplay i've ever seen so he, horrible. so he sees this waitress going around taking photos at the at the club and and she goes in into the dark room to develop the film and and the, <laughs> the eye patch guy comes in and this nigga threatens to cut her titty off and you know, <laughs> give her the photo. <laughs> Again, another reason. Like, another reason what? to just show this white woman's titty. Like, it's a nice titty. Like, it's fine. I, I, I'm cool with it. But, like, he was just like, nah, I need to see that titty. For, for what? For what? For what? You could have threatened to murder her. You didn't need to threaten to cut off specifically a titty. He was like, nah, fuck that. That's how I roll. Super odd. Oh shit! Um, <laughs> so uh, gratuitous titties are up to to three at this point. Yeah, we we cut to um back to Howard and Coffee, and Howard tells Coffee that he bought part of the club uh, that they're in, and that he's running for Congress. What the fuck? All right, this is a weird conversation. Right? Uh, okay, one <laughs> one. This is a restaurant you take your girl to. That's wild. Like that's super wild. Um. And two, yeah, uh, I'm running for I'm running for Congress. Yo, but we in the titty club, yo. It's like, like I bought it, I bought half a titty bar, and I'm running for Congress. <laughs> right, what the fuck? What? <laughs> Nigga, they gotta do a background check. Nah, no, don't worry about it. We good. We good. I'm a, I'm a silent partner at a fucking Hooters, <laughs> and I'm running for the twelfth district. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even Hooters. Like one of the places by City Hall, like. You just go right. from City Hall just I to bought, the titty spot yo, right there. Street. Right. right. I bought half of Norma Jeans. <laughs> and now I'm running for mayor. <laughs> Literally, I'm running across the street because that's how Baltimore is laid out. Yeah, City Hall is a stone's throw away from the fucking red light district. That is the wildest fucking. Like, I remember when I found, when I found that out. I'm like, <laughs> I guess. It's near the capsule. Yeah, it's <laughs> directly next to the yeah, it's directly next to the the like the main yeah. fucking police department. I mean, I guess it's like if somebody weird. starts wilding out at the fucking strip club, like the, the cops are literally two minutes away. It's the safest block to be on. Yeah. yeah. I used to work in the building and there's a government building directly across the street from like uh, on 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 the Baltimore Street side. There's a there's a government building right there and I would work in that building. Like it's wild, man. I remember one time. I remember one time there was a fire because the government building was next to, like the this red light district is wild, right? Because on one side you got like 
all the all the on one side you got like a, a, a peep show, a club, a club, a subway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there's literally a subway right next to one of the trucks. <laughs> yeah, in case you wanted a sandwich in between your twenty four hours. Yeah, it right. is of course. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's money. Yeah. And then there's an alley where Norma Jeans is, and then and then there's the Hustler Club, and then across the street <laughs> there's like a peep show, and it used to be a bookstore, oh. and then there's the government building. I worked at the government building. <laughs> you one worked day, at the peep show building, nigga. Stop lying. One day <laughs> there was a fire, and we thought our building was on fire. No, oh God. the peep show was on fire <laughs> because one of the many homeless people in Baltimore went into the peep show to try and warm up, lit a fire to try and keep it warm, and the shit went out of control. Wow. They let us go home early because the smoke would come into our building. I couldn't believe it, yo. <laughs> uh, Baltimore is a wild place, yo. How did Dante uh, die? He lit a fire inside a peep show building. Yeah, you know, that's how people go out, yo. Fires get lit every day, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they really don't, but okay. That's a um, wild reason. Good Lord. So, yeah. Um, uh Congressman, the uh, aspiring congressman and uh, titty bar entrepreneur, <laughs> Howard Brunswick, uh, tells Coffee that. And Coffee is just so turned on by his ambition to run for Congress and own a titty bar. <laughs> <laughs> that they go home and she fucks the shit out of Howard. I feel like this is this is the exact opposite of a conversation that's happened between Rosaria Dawson and, and Cory Booker. <laughs> this has never happened to them. I would just assume Rosario Dawson would be buying the titty bar. Yeah, now that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, man. Uh, coffee goes to work. And uh, the next night, Coffee goes to work and is harassed by a white man because... Of course. I mean, you know... Anyway, um, but Carter, uh, the stalking cop, is there and he tells him to get lost, right? Call yeah, I, l- I like this scene. He, he was like, he threw that white dude on the hood of that car with uh, with extreme prejudice. I appreciated that. <laughs> yeah, you know. If I was a black cop, I would just, if I was a black cop in the 70s, I would just go around Billy clubbing the shit out of drunk white men. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> That'd be my whole thing. You want to work the late shift? Absolutely. Ah, you smell like seven whiskeys, buddy. Come here. Let me let me talk to you. Bow right in your kneecap. Get moving. Get the fuck out of here. I'd be an say asshole. Say the alphabet. A bow. Right. <laughs> you call me a nigga? What? I didn't say nigga. You just said it. Boom. Yeah, nice stick. Get out of here. Like back in the seventies, they had the like the nice stick with the like the leather strap and shit. They'd be like tossing it. I light your ass up. I'd go right down to the red light district. That'd be my whole job. Whole job. Fuck it. I'd be known over there. It's a great job. Coffee and uh, Carter go get a cup of coffee at uh, his place. Cliche. And uh, at his guess, place, I think it's his place. This guy's trying to fuck. Hey, yo, well, trying to hey, stay up yeah. all night. He been he been trying to fuck. Well, he like look. I went to your <laughs> drug rehab sister house. Come on now. Come on, right? Help me. That's out. why. He, that's why he saved her from from uh, her being harassed by that white guy. He's like, all right, look, it didn't work the last time, but this is sure to get me some of that good pussy this time. <laughs> why was he there? Because he stalking he was, her. Uh, that's what I'm saying. He's stalking her. No, he doing he doing the job that I want. Beating up drunk white men with a billy club <laughs> <laughs> sounds awesome. Yeah, but she was at her job, yo. No, he's a creep. Just pulled up. (laughs) No, this nigga is a creep, yo. He's a creep. I just happen to be here at nine thirty. Sorry, it's crazy. Yeah, you want to come get some coffee? No, nigga, ew. So um, they reminisce about the good old times uh, because apparently they um, they had a they were in a bit of a relationship in the past, and uh, coffee begins to open up. But Carter uh, gets a phone call uh, from his corrupt white guy partner, and um, and uh, Coffee is a little concerned. Carter tells Coffee that his partner's on the take, and even though he knows it, he's not going to do anything. I mean, uh, he's on the <laughs> take with this new gangster from Vegas named Arturo Vitroni, hmm. and that 
he turned down the option of going in on the uh, on the corruption with him. Um, which, all right, nigga. Um, He's yeah. really trying hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See what a good guy I am. Like, all right, take a top <laughs> off. Uh, and and what did it get you? <laughs> An ass whooping. Um, after a signal from Carter's corrupt partner, two hooded men break into Carter's house and beat Carter severely, temporarily crippling him. Nigga. This one scene of is the insane. Two dudes, uh, Sid Haig. 100% him. <laughs> and, yeah. It him. It, it rips off Coffee's shirt and attempts to fucking rape her. And the partner's like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> yo, even his partner's like, yo, relax, my nigga. God damn. Yo, we have other business tonight. Like, this nigga on. said, just a second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have titties. Like, yo, all right, yo. All right. God damn, yo. <laughs> Look, he was like, I got to get it off. Like, I was I was taken aback by that, yo. <laughs> it's a little... <laughs> Like, they really play up how much of a piece of shit Sid Haig is in this movie. He's like, I need to see him. Oh, man. Um, so, um, like, they didn't beat him that bad. Uh, uh, apparently they did, Terrence, because like, then no, they, they paralyzed him. <laughs> <They're> right. <laughs> like, like, the next scene, I'm like, damn. They put that nigga in traction. They beat they him until the ketchup like flowed out of his orifices. Uh, not even that. That looked like paint. That looked. Like, <laughs> it was way too bright to be ketchup. Any type of real ketchup. That shit was. That shit was paint done with like a fine brush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did put that dude in traction. That's. He looks like he fell off of a ski lift. <laughs> he, he was so damaged. Like Jesus Christ. Coffee's next targets are a pimp named King George and uh, one of the largest suppliers of prostitutes and illegal drugs in the city and mafia boss Arturo Vitroni, a criminal associate of King George. Coffee goes up. I don't know how many days later this is. It's probably the next day because, you know, it's time to fly. Yeah, timelines do not matter here. Nah. This all happened in a weekend. Yeah, because he got beat the fuck up, and then the next scene he's in he's in a fucking full body cast. <laughs> right, <laughs> two days. <laughs> I don't know. Coffee uh, goes up to uh, I guess this whorehouse, and she questions a former patient of hers named Priscilla. Um, white people just look just the worst in this movie. Yeah, they really. They really aim to make them look like pieces of shit in here. Like, yeah, like, can we get makeup? No, no, <laughs> none. We will had a budget. Like, it, it's it's actually super well. Priscilla is a known drug user, and she uh, she questions her to gain insight into the type of women that King George likes, and where he keeps his stash of drugs. Uh, Coffee shows no sympathy for this fucking drugged out. Uh, uh, a Brooklyn Marylander. And <laughs> that's a deep cut. Yeah, that's a I deep mean, cut. Uh, she uh, looks yes. like somebody from Glen Burnett, man. Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> and yeah. yeah. I mean, she does. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're not lying. No, you're not. And, um, and uh, she shows no sympathy for this woman and is abusive to her and she looks for answers. Yeah, she's um, going to cut her face with a broken bottle <laughs> yeah the other side of her face because she stitched her up before yeah that's right that's right that. like she's like yeah i was the nurse that, that sewed your face up you got cut okay. don't make it happen don't let the me last do it. time it was um, cool that leslie jones is in this movie <laughs> <laughs> priscilla's pimp uh <laughs> leslie jones comes back <laughs> priscilla's pimp harriet comes back yeah <laughs> now hold on a like, second oh, she says my old man is gonna come back and she's gonna be pissed i was like wait what <laughs> now okay here here's my question like but seriously yo that woman doesn't like pam greer for real right like like she looked like she was ready to fuck her up for real like she didn't like she was like nah i don't like this th this big titty woman like get out of here like my i i run, run shit light-skinned heifer yeah like i feel like i feel like they had they had beef yeah. Off camera. Yeah, I feel like set. I feel like Harry. Yeah, is, I feel like Harry's real name is Harry, and she's not an actress. Yeah. <laughs> now that seems about right, actually. 
like she wasn't trying to pull that swing with that chair. No, no, nah, she wanted to hit Pam Grier with that chair. She was like, nah, she's the new Jack of uh, of action actors. She yeah. she don't fuck around. She told me to hit her with a chair, so I hit her with a chair. Fuck that. Uh, uh, this is a quote from Harriet. I uh, I leave for a half hour and I come back to find you with some nigga bitch. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. It was. Yo, when she I, came in that room, it was fucking serious. She wasn't fucking room. I feel like that. <laughs> coffee was like, nope. <laughs> like, get the fuck out. Yeah, of she me. broke out. She ain't trying to fight her at all. She was like, I gotta go. I feel like uh, I feel like that role was originally cast as a white man, and they and that guy didn't show up on set that day, and they needed to film it. So they were like, "All right, uh, so and so, get your wife to come up here and say I've been gone for a half hour, and I come back to find you with some nigga bitch, your old white tramp." Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. But they were like, "Yeah, we got this. We got we got Leslie Jones. Like, Jesus, that's fine. She's gonna fuck people up." All right, now, I don't have the music playing at the moment, <laughs> but I think this is what you're talking about. You see? Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> <laughs> we cut to a scene of the arrival of King George. This nigga is out of control. <laughs> this, this nigga's entire outfit is out of pocket. Like, it is. It is. Yo, this nigga got a cape. <laughs> yeah, this nigga, yo, he's wearing a costume. To the side. This nigga look like Big Daddy Kane, yo. <laughs> What's <laughs> weird is everyone else in this movie is dressed pretty conservatively, like, for the times. He was like, it looks like he's in a different black exploitation movie <laughs> and just ended up on the wrong set. And he was just like, fuck it. I guess wild. Should have been in Superfly. Right. Like, it just, it right. feels like, you know, like, what, what are you doing here? Like, I get it. He's a pimp. He's like, a pimp. like, I get it. But at the same time, like, this nigga looks ridiculous. And, and he's he, got the best theme music. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember his theme music. George. Yo, this shit is amazing. Um, okay. We're about like, to get to one point. That um, <laughs> this looks insane. that was that this this did it for me right like I I completely lost it. Uh, we see King George and King George comes up and he meets with uh, coffee. Now coffee is posing as a Jamaican <laughs> <laughs> because because King George likes them exotic. Right? Yo, so, this scene was <laughs> is, fucking is nuts. <laughs> He, King George meets with Coffee. Oh my and God. They start talking. And remember, Coffee is supposed to be Jamaican, right? Yo, what is this accent? The, yo, it is the worst accent. I don't even know where it's from. I don't know what she was trying to do. Well, I think she was trying to do Jamaican. But here's the thing when you do an accent, you got to do the whole accent. You can't just add mon at the end of sentences, yo. You don't have a Jamaican accent. That's all you can do. She was just like regular, regular, regular mon <laughs> at the end. I'm like. That's and then sometimes it sounds British. Like, yeah. That's what I thought it was. I thought it was British. Yeah. Like, yeah. What the fuck? That's how you am mon. What the? F yo. All right. This yeah. Look, I mean. Pam Greer is a lot of things. Doing voices is not one of them. Like, no. Oh, no, nah, stick to your accent, please. She that shit was hilarious. Jamaican. She's Jamaican. Jamaica, Queens? <laughs> like, nigga, where is she from? No. Now she looked fine. Oh, she looked super good in that bathing suit. Knock she, it off. Mm, yeah, but, uh, the, yo, I, like, and I wouldn't even be mad if I didn't know that she was trying to be Jamaican. Like if that right. voice came out of her mouth, like, all right, fine. But now I no just be like, like, okay, right. This uh, is a right, odd choice. What part, of, what part of England are you? <laughs> right. England by way of Jamaica, man. <laughs> man. All right. all right. And sometimes it wasn't even man. It was man. <laughs> 
Like when I in my senses, man. Like man. I I just assume that King George has never met a person from Jamaica. Like ever. He, he's never left. Yeah. Which is fine. Which is fine. Uh, that'll probably be the first place he goes when uh, he does leave the country because that's what we do. We go to we go to, we go to the islands. islands. Well, he's going to go to uh, Freeport or Nassau because <laughs> black people are really not allowed to go anywhere else. Y'all don't even we don't even go anywhere else in the islands. We go to the Bahamas almost every time. Yeah, pretty much. I went to Nassau first, and then I went to Jamaica. So mm-hmm. that, See, <laughs> there you go. Right of passage. That's how, it, that's how it is. Uh, George is immediately interested in coffee's exotic nature. <laughs> he hires her exotic nature. He's a black chick with a bad <laughs> voice, and he's in, 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 in uh, uh, so he takes her back to meet all of the other prostitutes, none of which are exotic, except for maybe the Asian one. Because is know, she Asian? The one on the phone? I don't think that woman's I, Asian. That's what I assume. I just, it looked like she was, but I wasn't like... They Is usually she? cast like really stereotypical Asian women in these movies. Yeah, they don't do a half well, and half like, situation. This is probably a white woman squint. <laughs> I think that's just a white woman with high, high ass eyebrows, you know? Like, I really don't think that's an Asian woman. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, this during this time period. Like there, there was a James Bond movie set in Japan where they made Sean Connery Asian. Nah, yeah, nope. Nah, yeah, that's unacceptable. <laughs> that's unacceptable. What is the name of that movie? Uh, <laughs> you only live twice, uh, and yeah, you gotta see that shit. You know. It's amazing, and um, and it was a whole bunch. It was a whole grip of white people just being <laughs> Asian. Like, all right, wow, you know, that's that tone is, it down. Yeah, just hire Asian actors. Right. But anyway, um, King George uh, apparently doesn't have a taste for the exotic because all these women are white, save for one black, one other black. Yeah. Who also has a really weird walk on scene. She just has headphones on and she just kind of <laughs> walks to the scene. To whatever music she got on. Which just tells me they hired her and they were like, oh, she'll be really great. And we're going to give her a line. And then they tried and she was really bad. And they were like, just walk on to the scene. Don't. <laughs> Just don't say anything. You're super fine. That's all we need to do. Just keep it that way. Yeah, just don't say shit. <laughs> um, so he takes her back to meet the rest of the prostitutes. And one of the prostitutes, uh, the, the, the opposite, the negative, a blonde, flat-chested white woman becomes jealous when jealous. she sees King George taking interest in coffee. Yeah, nigga, he ain't looking. blind. Right. right. <laughs> His dick works. <laughs> she, uh, she, uh, never mind. I was about to say something that I probably shouldn't. Um, <laughs> later, <laughs> so, so this woman, this woman, this woman, she looks like, um, she, this white woman, this jealous white woman kind of reminds me of, um, who's Amy the woman? Who, who's the, no, well, kind of, <laughs> but the, who's the woman with, uh, the interracial porn face? Who was in? Um, who was? Oh, in, uh, Julia Stiles. Yes, <laughs> yeah, Julia Stiles. I really love how for a second you were looking at me like, "Nigga, what the fuck are you talking about?" And then you immediately got it. Julia Stiles. She does have a. She has an inter- interracial porn face. That's true. Yeah, she looks like she does interracial. Porn. Uh, that's what this woman looks like. She looks like she does interracial. Porn. I, considering her job, yeah, 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 yeah. she does. So, um, yeah, she's super jealous. Um, uh, later that day, uh, King George throws a party, and uh, everyone is captivated by coffee named Mystique because niggas aren't creative. You're right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking odd. Um, the jealous, flat chested white woman um, accidentally. "Quote unquote," spills a drink on coffee dress. Well, hold on, because there oh, there are a couple yeah, people a, who show up. We get a we get an introduction of um of uh of uh Vitroni and uh, his bodyguards Sid Haig and white guy. Yo, uh, one okay. Hold, hold on a second. Vitroni looks like yeah. a woman dressed up as a man. 
right? Like it's not just me. Like I'm not not that's not like a, a transgender joke. Like he just looks like a woman playing mm. like a little guy. Like the she looks does. like she looks like uh the character it's Pat. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the the other guy not Sid Haig kind of looks like just a generic white guy in an anime. Like he just like like uh was it like Lupin or whatever like that that old anime from like the 80s. Like he yeah, just kind of does look like Lupin. Yeah, he just he kind of does. He just got a big fucking head. <laughs> He's got that weird head, that hair that swoops over. Yeah. And Sid Haig is a creep. He just has a creep fucking vibe. He's a perfect villain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he oof, yeah. Yeah, that guy makes me very uncomfortable in everything I've ever seen him in. <laughs> is he a white guy? What is he? Uh, I he feel like something. like Armenian or something like that. Maybe I have to look yeah. it up. Yeah, okay. I, he's not just he's not your standard white. <laughs> yeah, no, no. He looks like he should have like a gold chain and like a shirt that unbuttoned by three buttons at the top. Oh, I was right, Armenian. <laughs> okay, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so so Persian by way of Turkey, basically. Right. Six four. I think I told him that's one. Wow, yeah. Jesus. So um these guys come to the party, right? And everybody is uh captivated by coffee because coffee oh, look, look, that old white man look like fucking um, Ronald Reagan. He does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I I, like, I oh noticed that too. Like what the fuck? Ronald's uh, like, oh, I, you know, I like pussy too. <laughs> Come on. Hell. Oh shit, that one. <laughs> yeah. Like the first guy they show in the party. Yeah, that dude looks he looks like a little short fat Reagan. Well, I uh I'm very interested in uh <laughs> your uh your coffees. <laughs> um so yeah, the big the, the VIPs are here. Like this is a like this is a a a a party for a bunch of big wigs, right? And and Vitroni is is one of the big wigs, right? Because I don't know how she knew he was going to be here, but uh, how Coffee knew that Vitroni was going to be here. Yeah, but, I, uh, I think it's just happenstance. Yeah, I mean that was part of her plan, right? Um, so during the party, everybody's captivated with her, and jealous, fat-chested white woman accidentally <laughs> spills a drink on Coffee. Now, I don't know how the hell we go from spilling a drink on a white dress to coffee's titties popping out, but here we are. Yeah, and, you know, this scene like, is nuts. Over. It was like, bam. Coffee, like, ate through the strap. That was unfortunate. You're right. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Your, your the, fucking, your, your Shirley Temples or margaritas or, or whatever you, you alcoholics drink, the shit fell on her lap, and then her, her titty popped out like, oh, no. Well, it gets worse uh, after Coffee gets her revenge because it is a guy's version of uh, two women fighting. Oh, yeah. This is like, oh, they're fighting, they're fighting. Oh, the tops came off. Crazy. Like, what? <laughs> this is the scene that I remember the most. This movie. Well, yeah. Not not only because of the fight, but because of what's his name's fucking, the look on Homeboy's face. The entire fight is hilarious. <laughs> he looks so fucking bad. Uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, um, George. Oh, yeah, King George. Yeah, King like, George. look at his look at his face as this fight continues on. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> He's like, look at these raggedy bitches I didn't hire. <laughs> yeah, he looks so bad. He's so fucking angry. <laughs> Meanwhile, the the guy, um, yep, there's uh, Pam Grier's titty that had to come out. That was the first one out, and then for some reason in the fight, she has to rip off the top of the other woman. She has to like that. That's her go to move. Like. <laughs> It's so it wild. Yeah, I mean, what else what else could she do? So so Coffee, while she's changing her clothes, she goes to find uh, oh. King George's stash and she swaps out uh the drugs with like sugar or whatever. Yeah. And then she goes she goes in and she puts razor blades in her hair. Uh to uh as as Bitch, as what is it? Baltimore in nineteen ninety five? Relax. <laughs> And then Coffee instigates this fight, right? She dumps a salad on this bitch. 
And like you said, all all hell just breaks loose, right? This fight is, uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's so a mad. Pretty solid fight. This fight is amazing. Dude, it, all over the place. Yeah, it's yeah, not she bad. Did, yo. she, when she she beat the shit out of these women. <laughs> when uh, when uh, the fly chopped white woman rushed her, she fucking she ducked down and tossed her ass over. This shit was good. <laughs> hey, yo, she fucking she fucking palmed her head against a fucking wall like bam yeah. and then another woman tried to get her from behind and she just fucking snap made her ass <laughs> get the fuck out of here lady but that's what I'm saying like one the, the titty shots great but gratuitous Damn, she kicked the shit out of that woman, yo. Yeah, yeah like the fight scene is not bad it's not bad it's a solid fight scene. she punted the shit out of that woman Yo, that dude is so pissed the entire time. Like, this shit is funny. So... <laughs> Yo, he is so mad. Yo, he hit her with her. she hit the flat chested white woman with another snap, man. Grabbed her by her hair and just <laughs> bow, punched her in the... <laughs> she bottled the, the black chick in the head. One white woman tried to pull her off and just grabbed a handful of titties. Like, I mean, how could you not? I get it. But <laughs> she got her top ripped off for no reason. Uh, but 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 our enjoyment. I don't know what it is, but yo, first of all, okay, I get to, I got to the part where the flat the white woman picked up a bottle, right? And I thought she was about to, bam, bust a bottle open and have nah. like a jagged dagger, right? Nah, she threw the shit. <laughs> she threw it at the audience. <laughs> She's like, the fuck y'all laughing at? Yo, I have to, I, ha- I don't know, I'm, I'm not aware of the spatial awareness of this room. <laughs> I have to imagine that the that the crowd is somewhere all the way over there. Yeah. The fight is somewhere all the way on the other side. And she just threw the shit in the air and damn near <laughs> hit both. Damn near hit King George, yo. And his face don't change the whole time. He like <laughs> That's why I, like again, I remember the fight, but his face through that whole fight is so fucking funny to me, yo. Coffee he smacks so the, mad. Coffee smacks the black woman so hard her titties pop out of her dress. <laughs> <laughs> she what she she fucking she fucking swings this other white woman in the red. She swings her so hard her titties pop out. The flat chested white woman tries to touch a black woman's hair and and she fucking pays for it. Yeah, by the way, this is this is a solution. If you are a black woman with an afro. Um, this is how you get white people to stop touching your hair. Put razor blades in it. <laughs> yeah. Have them facing out. Fucking... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. See what happens. So, so Vitroni is a freak, right? And uh, yeah. we, we established <laughs> that he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a freak. And he, he goes to George and is like, yo, I want, I want Mystique. Uh, I want to fuck her, yo. Like, bring her to my place, cause that shit was hot. <laughs> that shit was hot. Like, like you see, you see all that blood that she drew. That shit was fucking hot. I can't wait to do this shit to her. And um, so coffee. Uh, so we we smash cut to to coffee at at Vitroni's place, uh, prepping a gun with a silencer at his place or at a hotel room or something that he's. I think that he's coming to, and she plans to murder him. When Vitroni gets, she there, doesn't she. She puts the gun in like a bear or some shit, and it's in a tiger, yeah. yeah, a lion. Sorry, yeah, um, because yeah, we black lion. Yeah, we black, but the, the black big cat is the lion, right? As we all know, the white big cat the is tiger. the tiger. <laughs> we know, <laughs> we know. Um, yeah, she's she uh, she's basically. They they basically stole her uh, her idea um, in the last Boy Scout. <laughs> That's what we found out. So, Vitroni uh, is there, and he's making small talk or whatever, right? And and apparently, the only way Vitroni can get it up is if he humiliates women. Yo, he's hiding behind a normal sized lamp. They can't see him when he first comes in. That shit is hilarious. <laughs> Hello. I'm over here. It's like, wait, where are you? Oh, see, I am standing behind a normal little sized lamp. <laughs> Yo, this nigga's hair is just the worst. He's got a now, Jufro. Now all I can see is it's Pat. Yeah. And then their hetero life partner, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes around and does what most short men do. They they humiliate. Uh, they humiliate. <laughs> uh, what you shaking your head for? 
I, mean, I, 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 I guess I guess that must have cut a little too close for you. Yeah, no, because I because I already know it's coming. I wasn't. I honestly mm-hmm. wasn't. <laughs> no, nah, go ahead finish your statement, nigga. Go on. Go ahead. I honestly wasn't wasn't even thinking about you, but mm-hmm. I guess that's something that's on your mind constantly. Yeah. Uh, hit dog holler, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, he does he does what most people with Napoleon complexes do, right? <laughs> he's trying to he's trying to show how big he is, right? And um and and he makes her like he calls her like a like a like a nigga bitch or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, I don't mm, no I don't nah. like shit, yo. I don't, like I don't do race play. Thanks. Yeah, no. no. It's not for me. Um so He reminds me of Chris Catan. <laughs> 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 That's it. A modern remake. Like. Yo, he's a uh, tiny person, man. Yeah. Like she's significantly taller than him. Man, she, like she's got she, she's got heels on. I think. I think she's still. Yeah, because she's wearing the same thing for the rest of the. But Jesus Christ. Um. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm yeah. just watching the scene. <laughs> yeah, it's distracting. Uh, Good God. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, you said Jesus Christ, and I just started looking. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're just kind of right there, aren't they? Just <laughs> waiting to jump uh, out and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so she, uh, he goes over, Patron goes over to the bed, and 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 uh, Coffee pulls out her gun. And well, he, he, like, he, like, twists her hands to get her down on the ground, which is fucked up. Yeah, yeah. after he yeah. called her, like, a nigger bitch. Yeah. And then he spit on it. I was like, mm. well, that's yeah, when I would put a bullet in your face. Yeah. Nah, yo. That's, that's don't do that. The, that's when the fucking gun came out. Because nah, <laughs> spitting is the, uh, the highest form of disrespect. Yeah, you don't spit on somebody. Else. No. You just don't. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, funny. His reaction when she pulled it, I go, oh, shit. Oh, I fucked up. <laughs> oh, you ain't playing no more? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it must be an odd feeling to be f- to fear for your life with a hard dick. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, I feel I feel like that. Yeah, that that probably slows that up real quick. It's like, oh shit! <laughs> so just as Coffee is about to shoot him, uh, she is overtaken by one of his men. Look, Sig Haig comes in here, and he literally steals this moment by <laughs> j- just by being stealthy in the most overt way possible. <laughs> <laughs> like nigga, you're six four. I can hear you. I can hear you breathing. He's like, come on, yo. What, what, what like, we? oh, there's Sid Haig. Like, no, that's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> nigga's huge. Fucking Falcon punch. Like, God damn. Yeah, he punched the shit out of her too, yo. <laughs> He's like, you could have just took the a, gun. It was a fucking haymaker, yo. Like. Yo, he's holding her wrist and stepping on her stomach. Yo, Sid Hank is a piece of shit in this movie. This is, this is not the worst thing he's ever done. Or it's, it's certainly not the worst thing he does in this movie. So um, that weird, uh, that weird, I can't afford an eye patch, but I can afford prescription <laughs> glasses with one of the lens out guy. Uh, he comes in and is like, yeah, I know her. And uh, then we cut to... Uh, King George, you know, making making some uh, making some drugs as you do, and um, his I guess that flat chested white woman was his bottom bitch, and uh, she is looking fucking horrible. Yeah, like, she looks she, like she on the fucking bottom, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and she's getting super insecure, right? Because he's like, oh shit, like she's got a, a bruise on her eye and her lip, and her hands are taped up because she dared to touch that black woman's hair. And um, what a lesson! What a she, lesson. She's she's just concerned that you know you still my fa- I'm still your favorite, right? Whatever, bitch. I'm working. Like don't don't just just like a fucking white man. Look, I'm over here trying to work. You bother me with this bullshit. Yo, know, great value. Richard Roundtree is not having it. Like he's pissed. <laughs> That's the cop from RoboCop. Oh, the the sergeant. That's him. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, it is. Oh, You're right. right. Yeah, that is him. Um. So uh, the uh, coffee went and to- and tells Vitroni that King George ordered her to kill him, which makes Vitroni order King George murdered. Um. Uh, so we cut to King George making, uh, making dope 
and um, then he goes, he steps out, and he, Vitroni's men uh, are there, and they're like, hey, Vitroni wants to see you. He's like, oh, okay, this is unexpected, but, you know, let's, let's, let's all go. So they, uh, they, take, um, they take his car uh, yeah, with his boy, with King George's boy, up. his buddy. Who made a who made a big deal about you know I only work for King George and fuck you Sid Haig mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> like all right yeah we'll see about that so they take him for a big ass drive fucking fucking JBL and and Sid <laughs> take this nigga for a ride and and yeah. they end up uh, going to a to uh, to uh, the woods they fucking wrap a noose around this nigga's neck. And they hold him outside the car while they are dragging his ass. And Yo, this the other part that I remember. This scene is pretty. I mean, it's a it's a pretty iconic scene. Um, it's fucked up. Like it's super fucked up way to kill somebody. Yeah, because they they start driving at a, like a reasonable rate, and he's just like he's trying to run behind and like keep up until he gets dragged, and then they just continue dragging this nigga through several scenes. Um, until his body is very, very damaged and he is very dead. Yep. Does not look good. Yeah. Um, and he's driving him through. I like, don't think he's going to make it. He's driving him through like residential streets too. You know? like, God, right, like, damn. Like we can see you. <laughs> right. Like, this is a crime. Like, <laughs> he drives him through residential, town. through residential streets. And then he finds a fucking obstacle course. <laughs> right. <laughs> Surprised he didn't run into the aggro crag at the end. Like, good lord, it's ridiculous. Uh, it was pretty brutal. Yeah, it really was. Um, cut to uh, uh, council to uh, the councilman uh, doing nothing and shooting a commercial, talking about how things should change, but doesn't have any idea of how to make things change. Uh, he's speaking in a bunch of platitudes and spoke about how he marched with Dr. I mean, <laughs> uh, and then you cut to, uh, I was very disappointed to- when I found this and, uh, just want to let you guys know as a, as a black man and a, and a supporter of what's this guy's name of uh, Brunswick, uh, Brunswick. <laughs> a Brunswick, Brunswick supporter, uh, feel the Brunswick is, uh, all I have to say, feel the bun. <laughs> This guy didn't do shit. Anyway, go ahead. Um, and we see that it's all a commercial. Uh, we see um, that, uh, yeah, he's speaking at a bunch of platitudes, which really got on my goddamn nerves um, because I don't trust him. Um, so while in captivity, Coffee discovers Councilman Brunswick is corrupt uh, when she is shown to him at a meeting of the mob and several police officials. Um, during captivity, there's a, a brief scene of, of coffee trying to get out and Sig hey coming over and antagonizing her. And she's like, Hey, I need some water. Would you come in here? And Sig hey is like, yo, what are you fucking stupid? Would you go hit me with one of them rocks in there? First of all, why'd you put her in a room with a bunch of fucking rocks? It's like a sauna. Oh, yeah, he's like, yo, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> like, I've been a villain piece of shit for a long time. People have been wanting to hit me in the head with rocks for years. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> right. Yeah, this, uh, you ain't the first woman I've punched. <laughs> like, I know how y'all <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be trying to kill me. Like, yeah, pretty much. Um. So, yeah, Councilman Brunswick comes in. What is he driving? Looks uh, like a Corvette. Uh, Cobra, a Corvette? Yeah, I think it's a Corvette. Uh, he drives up to uh, to this house. There was something about this house that I saw in IMDb trivia. I think it's just like a house that they used in an old Western or something like that. Uh, but Tony's home is actually that of Western movie legend Roy Rogers. That's Roy Rogers' house. Guys. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I figured Roy Rogers would live a little bit more uh, lavish than that. Well, that was before he met Hardy's. And they died. <laughs> <laughs> He hadn't really gotten to his burger. He hadn't gotten to his burger bag yet. 
Oh, so, Lord Rogers, so he comes there to meet with uh, the cops and the mob and the one-eyed man. And uh, coffee is brought to them uh, because, you know, everybody's trying to get all their cards out on the table. The one-eyed man is like, yo, Brunswick knows this bitch, right? And <laughs> fucking prove it. They bring her in. And um, by the way, this is the part in the movie where I'm like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> like, right, it got a little convoluted. It got a little convoluted at this point. I'm just kind of like, can yeah, we get back I, to the titty fight in the the <laughs> the brightly colored uh, uh, you know hotel room? Because that seemed so cool. I think the councilman is trying to use the 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 money from the mob to kind of get things done you know how you say you would get money out of politics but you would use money to get money out of politics yeah you have to yeah then, then it's it's hypocritical but that's the only thing well then you're no better than fucking brunswick that's fine at least i'm not saying hey like what the fuck <laughs> if i have to be brunswick that's fine i mean he's a piece of shit too but he does it he is an entrepreneur though he does own half yeah, does half, own a half a titty bar titty <laughs> bar he does he owns one titty of the bar. That's right. He took his, him and a bunch of his friends took their twelve hundred dollars, put it all Ow. together <laughs> to flip a titty bar. <laughs> Rise and grind, never sleep. That's the mentality too. Rise and grind. Let's everybody use all of our twenty twelve hundred dollars to. That sounds like flip titties. That 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 sounds like socialism to me. But whatever, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. Right. Let's all use our twelve hundred dollars to do to flip one titty bar. But that, like, yo, seriously, putting all your money together to flip a house was one of the dumbest things I've ever read on Twitter. Yeah, I was like, yo, what is the profit margin for a hundred people much, getting getting in on this? How much are y'all gonna get once you flip it? Right. Like, yo, I, pay pay to refurbish it because you know you got to put money into it to make it look presentable. No, nah, twelve hundred dollars. That's it. We got we're gonna get six thousand okay. people to put in, and everybody's gonna get fifty four dollars back. And it's gonna be <laughs> totally worth it. And who's gonna do the work? Oh, uh, I mean, I don't know who's gonna do work. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, y'all niggas don't know anything about starting a business. Shut up. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> just yeah, just shut up. Uh, Twitter's dumb. Yeah, uh, a lot of people on there. And uh, this is where it goes off the fucking rails. Brunswick denies knowing her other than a prostitute and uh, coffee is sent to her death. Um, Seems rude. You forgot the part where she found a bobby pin in the sauna and just filed it down into a point. Yeah. And then she put that in her hair. Yeah. Like, that's going to get lost because that's a lot of hair, but you know. She's yeah, like, she put it right next to the shotgun. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> Like hair like an acme bag <laughs> <laughs> just fucking put a bunch of shit out of it <laughs> okay wily e. coyote could never was that name <laughs> that uh that uh new mutant that they were going to create trail oh, uh, trailblazer, trailblazer. trailblazer. Yeah. yeah yeah with a backpack with infinite space in it <laughs> <laughs> so, so. <laughs> fucking bugs bunny pop <laughs> <laughs> Look, coffee is driven. We're almost done. Coffee is, uh, <laughs> is, is driven off to her death. Um, but uh, she she uses what she got to get what she wants. And um, she remembers that uh, Sig, well, I don't know if she remembers, but she assumed that Sig Haig is a bit of a pervert. And uh, I mean, and, and I a, also uh, assume this. And, and a dullard and was like, hey, you want to fuck? And Sig Hager was like, are you serious? Like, for real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One like, last after time? All, yes. After all, all the shit, shit I, did you? I did to you, like, like you still got a bruise on your upper lip from when I fucking haymakered you, but you, you would be down to fuck? Like, yeah. Yeah. A good looking stud like you? Sure. All right. <laughs> get the fuck out, guys. I want to fuck this shit. Like, all right, yo. You're an idiot. Like, I, I mean, like, here's the thing. Dudes aren't smart. You know? Like, they just are not smart. Like, this entire movie is predicated on the idea of if a woman is fine enough, she could just murder a bunch of niggas and y'all just fall for it. Like, oh, she got big titties? Oh, right this way. Come on in. Like, <laughs> every dude in this movie is a fucking idiot. And Sig Haig is supposed to be like, like a badass villain, and he's he's literally like, oh, 
you gonna touch my dick? Oh yeah, well, it's, 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 sure, sure, no problem, no problem. I will. I'll put myself in the most vulnerable of places, um, and I won't check your hair for weapons. Yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> Yo, this nigga is a fucking trip. Uh, she uses her sexuality to seduce her would-be killers. They try injecting her with drugs to sedate her, but she had replaced the illicit drugs with a sugar solution earlier. Um, uh, faking being high, she kills Sig Haig with a pointed metal wire that she fashioned herself and hid in her hair. There's the bobby pin that you were referring to. Mm-hmm. Um, she stabbed that nigga multiple times. Yo, she fucked his. Yeah, yeah, she fucked his shirt. Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and he's screaming, "Get it out of the ambulance!" And I was like, "I'll do that, sure." Nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll get right on that. Yeah, he he just fuck fucking off. left his funny. ass. Yeah, that was uh, fucked up. Then uh, before that, he took a bump and was like, "Hey, wait a minute! I wanted to get high before this. This is sugar." <laughs> <laughs> and then he just fucking rolled the fuck out. Um, we get uh, we get a uh, a chase scene, and um, there's a guy chasing coffee on foot, and there's a guy chasing <laughs> coffee in a in a squad car. The guy on uh, coffee runs across a six lane highway. Yo, she can't, <laughs> she ran across six ninety five. Yo, come on, <laughs> and and um. And uh, one of the, the guy chasing her on foot gets run over by a goddamn truck. <laughs> this is not, by the way, this is not a bad, that's not a bad action sequence. Like to coordinate that, that driving to stop uh, that close to her and stuff. That was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. This movie has little flashes of brilliance along yeah. with flashes of titty. But um, oh, that dude got run over super hard. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is, um, I mean, you love to see it, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yo, I, yo, ooh, can we? And then he got run over again. God damn! Can we talk about the cop car that does the like does the reverse? He does it like a three sixty into the other lane to go back to, down to where it's. I was like, yo, you didn't have to make that much racket. Like it was wildly unnecessary. Plus, he doesn't know how to control his car right like he meant to do just like a standalone hairpin turn right but he fucking he fucking overshot the shit he oversteered and had to it's like i mean look at these cars you can't <laughs> shit was fish tailing like crazy in the 70s oh yeah you are not right. a high performance vehicle yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean it's it is a heavy car i suppose it's like trying to, it's like trying to fish tail a deuce and a quarter right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's doing donuts in this. So uh, the cop car is trying to chase her down, right? And um, and she starts running. Uh, and if you look hard enough, you can see her panties uh, <laughs> as she is running away. Uh, because, I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, look. I mean, look. You didn't have to look that hard. That you right. niggas are hilarious. Yeah. If you if you look to your left, you can see Pam Gruss panties. Oh, very good. Thank you. I mean, that's what it's there for, right? She like her her shirt is her sweater is being held together by two buttons. Uh she picks up a rock, throws the shit far enough. First of all, the rock has to be pretty fucking heavy to do the damage that it did to that windshield. Second of all, <laughs> she had to really shot put that thing. Yeah, she fucking did. <laughs> um this causes the car to run over a, a, a ramp and fall on the side. <laughs> conveniently placed. Very conveniently placed. Fall on top, uh, fall on its roof. She grabs a shotgun and while the cop, from the car, while the cop is screaming. Now, as we learned in Black Dynamite, anytime a car's wheels are not touching the ground, the car <laughs> will spontaneously combust. Yeah, no, that's a fact. And that is exactly yeah, what the science. fuck happened to this car. Yeah, it's, lax at, it's last action hero science. And that is exactly what happened to this car. Um, she left that nigga to burn. Good. Yeah, this scene was kind of fucked up, but at the same time, cool. Like, bitch, give me that gun. I'll take that. Um, then uh, she waits at a bus stop. Uh, calls an Uber and then just fucking hijacks. Yo, why did the car light on fire? Yo? <laughs> <laughs> like, why did it just it's gonna explode? Yo, did it, this it, nigga it, start a campfire inside? Like, 
<laughs> like, what was going on? Is is it the same guy who started the fire at the fucking peep show uh, near Mike's job? Same reason? He got cold? Um, so my yeah. question is the next scene you said that she's sitting at a bus stop and some creep uh, picks her up. What is a shotgun? In her hand. <laughs> no, no, she leaves it. She leaves it there. Because she goes back for it. Oh, she does? Yeah. Like, after she robs this nigga, she drives back to the to the oh, spot okay. and then goes and picks it up. Yo, why didn't you just fucking jack the dude? Yeah. Like, right there. Yeah, it, it's a weird... It's like an added scene for no reason. Yeah, sure enough. She goes right back to it. Uh, someone who's she, so concerned... She's lucky about, someone else didn't well, take you, the motherfucker like that. What if a kid took it? For someone so concerned about uh, drugs and shit being in her community, she sure is just willy-nilly with leaving fucking shotguns around. Anyway, she grabs the shotgun. Uh, yeah, you're right. There she is. Uh, she hit it in a bush. Yeah. And, um, and she drives back to Roy Rogers' house. Um... <laughs> There, she murders fucking um, but, um, uh, Ramos, the uh, police commissioner guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, she murders all of um, Vitroni's men. Then she finds Vitroni. She has a little bit of a, you know, back. And, well, first of all, she fucking, she fucking crashes the shit in, into Roy Rogers. <laughs> oh, yeah, the car. Yeah, that was... <laughs> Hey, here comes uh, here comes John right now. Oh shit! <laughs> Boom. That was great. Then she uh she proceeds to kill these motherfuckers. Vitroni is running and he's running. <laughs> he runs towards a pool and he lost his he lost his balance, but not really. <laughs> and did a front flip into the pool. <laughs> and um, Oh, poor and Woody begging, Allen. He's begging for his life. <laughs> He's begging for his life, and uh, Pam Greer is like, I'm not going to shoot you. And he's like, I'll, I'll do anything. I'll pay you a million dollars, and um, which I guess is a lot of money in uh, 1970. Uh, it's a lot of money now. I mean, it's a million dollars. I mean, a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is, but like. In 1970, yeah, it was an insane amount of money. Yeah, and she's just like. Nah, yo, fuck you. And then, and then she, no, she was like, Yeah, I'll take a million dollars and let me know where what's his name is at. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and then she uh, shot him in his chest. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was fuck you, yo. Fuck uh, you. That shit was funny. Um, so she goes to uh, she goes to find uh, Brunswick and um, eventually he pleads for forgiveness. And, you know, he's using his charm. For some reason, this nigga has got a power over her where he can just use his rhetoric skills. His, he, he upped his persuasion skills, um, uh, probably due to him being shirtless in that fucking in that fucking robe, uh, looking every bit like somebody's fucking father. <laughs> have sex with somebody. It's just, just, just gross looking. <laughs> How this nigga get to be fucking Pam Greer? Come on, yo. <laughs> makes me mad. Um, the standards were lower back in the 70s, yeah. Apparently. This nigga didn't even have abs, yo. He didn't. Um, <laughs> he ain't had chest hair. This motherfucker looked like, looked like Clayface just formed in his body, <laughs> yo. <laughs> he got that fucking sunken chest syndrome where you could see the fucking ribs in his, in his fucking, where his sternum is and shit. Do a push-up once. So he's he's pleading. He's and he's like, you know, I did what I did to help the brothers and sisters and all that. And just as as coffee is like, you mean it? Because <laughs> coffee is dumb too. <laughs> just as coffee is like, you mean it? This fucking stupid ass white woman comes out and was like, hey baby, come on back. And coffee's just like, you know what? That's the last straw. I will forgive you for all the fucking the drugs and working with the mob and all that shit, but you were you fucking a white woman? Well, that, that that's a mortal sin, black man. <laughs> <laughs> shoots his shoot, shoots his fucking balls off, yo. Yeah, shoots him in the groin and leaves him to bleed out. That seems and, fine. Uh, and then coffee is just like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm gonna walk on the beach. <laughs> 
And then the, the... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then music starts playing. Very terrible music starts playing. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, that's an ending. So what is she going to do? I, I mean, she murdered like seven people. And that yeah. white woman just saw her blow her homeboy's balls off. Yeah, she's uh, not the witness, yo. Like, yeah, that white woman ain't gonna yeah. say nothing. Nah. I mean, I guess. Like, if you say something, you're gonna get shot done too. So, <laughs> so keep your goddamn mouth shut. <laughs> well, there you go. Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> no. It was, uh, it was something. Yeah, it was something. Again, I've seen it multiple times. Probably for the wrong reasons, but. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure that's true. <laughs> I'm sure that's true. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah, that's so all right. American International Pictures lost the chance to make Cleopatra Jones uh, in 1973 and made this film instead, which ended up grossing more money in spite of a smaller budget. Hmm. Uh, this is so Pam Greer. Yeah, they made a huge profit off of this. Uh, and the surprising success of this film forced American International Pictures to fast track Pam Greer's next picture, Foxy Brown, which came out in 1974. It was released nine months after this one was released. Wow. Damn. Yeah, it's pretty fast. Um, I mean, that's fine because Foxy Brown is great. Like, that's a good that's a good makeup from uh, from coffee, in my opinion. Yep. All right, coffee, and she'll cream you. Like, <laughs> well, what if you don't take cream in your coffee? Yo, like that. <laughs> it's not what that means. Like, she'll take she'll, her name is coffee. It could mean a couple things, right? But okay, exactly. Know yeah. what they mean? Uh, right. I mean, um, something <laughs> about a pie or something. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. Everybody, relax. Uh, um. All right. Anything else uh, before we get out of here? Uh, yeah, that was, like you said, Terrence, that was a movie. And, um, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not upset about it. I'm just, I'm nonplus. Okay. There you go. Yeah. I, I don't ever need to see coffee again. That's a shame. <laughs> Certain scenes. Sure. Um, otherwise, no. Um, all right. That's it for us. We'll be back with another preview episode uh, next week for a uh, preview for episode 172. So look forward to that. Uh, don't know what the topic is and can't tell you the movie. So um, <laughs> just look forward to that and we will see you guys next time. See ya. All right. Bye. Hey. You're watching the Black on Black Cinema YouTube channel. Make sure you check out our full reviews of black movies past and present. And every other week we do a preview episode where we talk about a random topic that affects the black community.